All right, so today I'm going to show you how to kick and ban a player for a certain period of time in your game. And I have 20 seconds set for this. So anything, anybody you put in here who's playing the game, including yourself, Simtech Gamer 7, you will kick and ban them for 20 seconds. So it says you are kicked from this experience. You are also banned by Simtech Gamer 7 for 20 seconds. Boom, we leave, try to get back in. No. So you are kicked from this experience. You're also banned for nine more seconds. So it tells you how much longer you got to wait. And we leave and probably get in this time, right? There we go. And we're back. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get a fresh world and get started on that. Cool. Here's my fresh world. I'll go ahead and get my starter GUI going. Starter GUI. Screen GUI and frame so i'm not going to spend too much time on the ui components i'll make this a little bit bigger drag this down i think i'm going to go to my frame and add a text button right we need a button for our kicking here we go and i'll just call that kick so i don't forget what it is oh let's call the name let's change the name of it too we'll call this kick button so i changed the name up here right and then let's go to the text down here. Text, instead of button, I'm gonna say kick. There we go. And then maybe I'll say text scaled to make it a little bigger. Cool. Now on the frame, hit the plus sign again, and we're gonna hit a text box. And this is where we're gonna type the name of our players. There we go. Let's move that up a little bit. Move this down, ah, that's good like that. Let's go ahead and call that player txt for a player text you can call it whatever you want as long as it makes sense that's what we're going to do our typing so i'm going to make that a little darker so i can i can see it with a white background let's go and boom i'll make it gray and then maybe i'll make the text let's see i'll keep the i'll keep almost everything the same i will make the text color like a yellow so i can see it right hit okay boom oh Undo, undo my movement. There we go. And then I'll make it maybe a little bigger. Where's my text scaled? Yeah, that's good. All right, cool. So on the frame, now let's add a local script, right? Local script. And we're going to type in the player and hit the button to send an event to the server to do the kicking. We're not going to kick them on client side. We're only going to specify who to kick on client side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my replicated storage. So I'll say local RS. That's the variable. That's the variable I'm going to use for replicated storage. Game get service replicated storage. I need my remote event, right? Kick RE. And that's going to be in replicated storage. Wait for child. Uh, let's call it kick RE. So you might be thinking, why do I need this? Why do I need this remote event? That's crazy. Well, we're going to talk from the client, which is our GUI, to the server, which is going to be in server script service. We're going to add a script here, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Hit server script service. Hit that plus sign. Hit script. We're going to call this kick, right? So in order for the client and the server to talk, we need something called a remote event. Let's go to replicated storage. If you look back on our local script, we have that replicated storage. Hit the equal sign or the plus sign. Hit remote event. Here's our doorway, right? And we're going to call that kick re, right? So that name must match that name right there. And in order to talk on the server, let's copy this from our local script. Go to our kick that's on our server and paste it. There we go. Now our doorway is on both sides, the client and the server. There's our client. There's our server. They look exactly the same. So let's go back to our local script client and let's work on that. Let's work on that first. So let's go ahead and get uh, a reference to our player text where we're going to be doing our typing. We'll say script.parent player text. Let's go ahead and get a reference to our kick button script.parent kick button and we'll make a variable 
for players, for our players service, game get service, players, because we need to loop through all of our players to see if that's the person we kicked, to see if they're in the game, right, to match them up. So I'm going to say a local function, kick them. This is going to be a function to do my kicking. I am going to call that function when my kick button, where's my kick button, is activated or pressed, right? Connect, kick them. Cool. So let's go back to kick them and finish it. So uh, we'll do a little local name variable for whatever we typed into player text. And this TEX is going to be what we typed in. So it should be the name. If it's spelt wrong or the player's not in there, it's going to be fine. We're just going to, we're just going to exit out of the function. We'll say no player found. All right. So now we want to do a for I and V in pairs players. There we go. That's our player service. Get children. That's going to be all the players in the game. Do. So this I is going to be a number like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to number the players. These are our players. So we care about V, right? We don't really care about I. In fact, what a lot of people do, if you don't use the I, they just do this underscore, right? That way you know it's not being used. So we only care about the V, right? So we'll say if V name equals equals, it's a comparison, two equals is a comparison, name then, Let's do hit it. Go ahead and do our kick re fire server v. So we're going to tell the server, hey, we're going to kick v. It's a player, right? It's the player we typed in. Uh, let's go ahead and do a print statement just so we can see some feedback. Kicking player v dot name, and then we'll return. We're only going to kick one player, whoever we found first with that name. There should only be one, right? Uh, maybe not though. I don't know. There might be now with the new naming convention. Oh, well, we'll run it. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So if I get down here, I'll say no player found. Cool. All right. That looks good here. Let's get rid of that so we can see it all. All right, good. Everything's done. So now we fired our server. When we go to kick somebody, let's go over to our server script servers kick that we just got started here and let's go ahead and do some kicking so we got our replicated storage variable our kick re variable that's great we can talk to our client we need a data store service so game get service data store service we also need a data store from the data store service so dss get data store and call this whatever you want. I might call this uh, my band data or your band data or game band data, something like that. That's fine. You can call whatever you want. Right, I'll say local function band player. So we're going to need the band player, right? And who, what are we going to get here? Well, this is going to be from the, this is going to be from the kick RE. So if I do kick RE on server event connect, what is that band player? I'm going to get two things. I'm going to get the person who did the kicking. So let's call that the calling player. Uh, there we go, player. And then I'm going to get the kicked player, right? That's the V that we passed in. Calling player comes for free because it comes from a local script, right? So they always they always send the calling player along with you, with the with the function. And now let's do a local. I'm going to call this T not. It's actually a T zero. OS time because we want to get the time when we kick the person. We'll do a data store set async. I'm not going to use P calls. I'm going to live dangerously. So I'll do this uh, set async. I'm going to use the kicked player's user ID to store when they last got kicked. Then I'm actually going to do the kicking. I don't want that. What do I want? Kicked player. Yeah, I want kicked player. Kick. I'll say you are also banned. Oh, and then we can, we can actually say like buy. Let's make that capital by 
dot dot that's a string concatenator we're not using a comma here it'll make it look like two two uh, variables or two uh, arguments so we'll do what is this calling player there we go and don't forget to do the dot name sometimes I forget that I got too many parentheses there cool give you a little message there we get kicked all right we don't need anything else here we're done that's all we need to ban the player um, and now we'll need another function so when you join the game to check to see if they're banned, so I'm going to say check if banned, whoops, banned player. Uh, we'll do local. We'll get data from our data store. Get a sync player dot user ID. We want to check to see if this player got banned. So if data comes back, it means they got banned at least once. I'll say if data then print player was banned and then we'll just put the player in here. oh we'll put the seconds right that data is seconds right and that this os time gives you seconds after january 1st 1970 it's an epoch time so it keeps counting upwards it's really handy to use you should look up this stuff too because you got a lot of formatting stuff you have os date it's really handy and it's used in other languages too not just here in roblox so let's do an else. Let's say else, if there was no data, player has never been banned. All right, cool beans. And this is going to get called when the player enters the game. So we'll say game players, player added, connect, check if banned. Get rid of those two extra parentheses. And we're just doing a printout right now, right? Let's just do a printout to test it. All right, so we go to do our, our uh, test here. Ooh, let's go to view and output window. And then the player has never been banned. Well, that makes sense. We just made it, right? So let's go ahead and do Simtech Gamer 7. We'll kick him. Boom, we got kicked. So now you already know how to do kicking. Let's try and get back in. You guys see this all right? I'll make this bigger. So this was banned, player was banned, and this is the seconds after epoch, right? So we have, we have a time. Oh, you know what? I should get rid of that for when I here go like this. And there, boom. All right, now it won't, now it won't show up when I start my game. So uh, let's check to see if enough seconds go by. We're going to pick a time to see how long they've been banned. So let's go to our kick in our server script service, our kick script, and then let's give a ban time. And I'm only going to do it for 20 seconds, because I'm doing a demo, right? So I'm gonna say ban time equals 20 seconds. If you wanna go longer, you get your handy dandy calculator out here, calc. And let's say you wanna do an hour. So there's 60 seconds in a minute. There's 60 minutes in an hour, voila. That number would be 3,600. Don't get the, don't use the comma, right? And then if you wanna do a day, you just multiply by 24. Cool. There you go. 86,400 seconds in a day. If you want to make it a week, then multiply it by another seven. There we go. There's a week. So you can just use seconds. It's fine. All right. I know it seems excessive, but let me get rid of this. Boom. And then now let's check to see if we're banned. Uh, if we're within the band window, then we'll kick our guy. If he waited enough time, or she waited enough time, we'll let them in. So how do we do that? We're going to do a local diff for diff time. OS, look at that, diff time. OS, this is the current time. OS time is our new time. And then we're going to send in our data. That was our stored time. That's going to give us a difference. Then we'll say if diff is less than band time, whatever you made that, then, oh, got to kick them. All right, we'll say player kick you gotta wait right you are still banned for we can give them a time right use the dot dot for the string concatenator because you can only pass in a single string here right you can actually pass in more stuff but i don't want to get into that and then we'll do ban time minus diff cool that'll be fine that should work yeah. All right. Cool. And then um, 
if it was uh, if this if this was more if diff is more than the band time this is just gonna pass right through we're gonna be fine all right so we'll go ahead and play it we're done all right we're done in 15 minutes let's go ahead and test it though right simtech gamer 7 boom we're banned ah oh, bummer let's try and get back in maybe the guy didn't code it right oh we're banned for 14 more seconds let's check to see if we're getting any errors we're not we're still just getting our our band message let's get back in do we wait long enough nope oh one second oh man that was a bummer and let's try and get back in good we're back in cool all right and you can do it over and over and over again so it takes the last band time too so you go simtech game or seven you ban them again and you get the idea so you can make a little game like this too like uh, how many times you got kicked, how many times you kicked somebody. That would be kind of cool. Uh, let me know. Maybe I'll do that in a video if you guys want, want to see that. All right. Uh, this is what? 16, 16 minutes. All right. Cool. You got a, a kick and ban system for your game. Good luck with that. And I will see you in the next video.